Hi everyone, have you ever needed to prioritize new features in your product or to actually create new products themselves? Well, one of the best ways to figure out what to do first or to figure out what's going to have the biggest impact for your customers is with Kano Analysis. And Kano Analysis is such a wonderful, wonderful tool. If we have a list of features over on the left hand side here, and if we rate the amount of satisfaction that our customers get out of it, maybe this one we have 10 satisfaction. But even if it has a satisfaction level of 10, so our customers absolutely love this particular feature, maybe it's the feature of you know having a camera on an iPhone. However, a camera on an iPhone, it's quite an old feature. So if we were to look at the place in the life cycle of an iPhone, it's right at the end. So it's not really a new fantastic feature. We expect to have this now. So uh, from zero to 10, 10 being the end of the life cycle, we'd probably put this as a nine or a 10. So let's put it as a nine just to be safe. Uh, and as you can see, even though it's a great feature, um, because it's quite at the end of its life cycle, it's, it's nearly, it's still a delighter, which is nice, but it's almost more of a satisfier. In fact, if we just had a normal satisfaction level for, for this particular uh, phone camera, as an example, and it's really late in the life cycle, as you can see with these beautiful lines here, it actually fits in the satisfying, it just satisfies our customers. If it's not there, they're probably gonna be unhappy, but if it's there, they'll be like, yeah, it's, it's kind of okay, I enjoy having it. Now, it's not like a delighter. If we, if we had an iPhone and it could cook us breakfast, maybe that would be an amazing thing. And because it's fancy and new, then it would be right over here and well in the bounds of our delighters category. Now, of course, if it doesn't bring a lot of sat satisfaction to our customers, then um, you know, these are just our normal, normal items as well. So we separate these into must have categories, satisfier categories, which is uh, if, they, if we do have them, it's, it's okay. And if we don't have them, it's actually really bad. Our customers won't buy it. And then our delighter categories, which is uh, if, our, if we do have it, our customers will be absolutely ecstatic um, and go above and beyond. But if we don't have it, it's not the end of the world. And all of this is created automatically on your very own Kano analysis chart, which we're going to create together in Excel. And it's going to be a whole bunch of fun. Let's get into it. Now, the first thing we're going to do is just create the heading area and also the table area, which is quite simple to do. And we might speed it up ever so slightly as we go along so we can get into the really good stuff of creating the Kano chart itself. For our table areas, we're going to have the number, we're going to have the feature name, the satisfaction level, and the place in the life cycle from early in the life cycle to late in the life cycle. We'll put these in the center and the middle, make them bold, and let's give this area just a, a little bit of a nice turquoise color, maybe increase the size ever so slightly. Now let's put a nice border around this, a nice thick border to start, and then a thick border around the heading area. And for the rest of the area, let's select more borders. Now with more borders, what we want to do is have a nice dashed line for our horizontal lines, and just a normal solid line for our vertical lines. If we click enter, then that does that automatically for us. And let's put this in the center and the middle, make it nice and easy. We'll give ourselves some numbers. And now we've got a table to work with. Let's quickly fill out our product name, put it over to the right hand side in the middle and increase the end indent just a little bit. For this one, we might merge and center this area, turn this white and put a little bit of a border around this and, uh, and put it to the left again. Now this way, this will be our product name and, uh, and it's clear that they can fill it out or our customers can fill it out. We're also going to say, what's the average product time to replacement? We'll put this to the right and indent this a little bit, make it white as well. And this will just help us figure out the actual life cycle time. So for example, we might uh, replace our iPhone every two years, but the overall you know, life cycle of the iPhone itself might be 10 years, so it's got, or maybe 20 years, it's gone from 2007 Maybe it'll be 2007 before it starts to, uh, 2027 before it starts to be replaced by another technology. So these ones, let's turn them white again. Let's put a nice uh, little border around this. 
This one will be a normal number, and we'll put this in the center in the middle. And this one is going to be a drop down, so this is going to be a little bit different. Let's look at our drop down areas. There are two things that we need to include, and one is our chart axis. So what we're going to do is just have chart axis and a five and a five, and this will be useful for our Kano chart in a second. But then for our drop down, we want our life cycle, and this could be uh, measured in days, in weeks, in months, or in years. And to do this, we want to select that cell. We want to go to data, and we want to just make sure that uh, we select data validation. And from data validation, we want to allow a list. And the source of that list is going to be our days, weeks, months, and years. And if we cl click enter there, now we can select any of these. And let's say years for this one, put this in the center and the middle. And now we've got something really, really nice. Let's put in some data just for our, uh, for our table so that we know what we're working with here. And now we can select these items and we'll say insert. And what we want to insert is actually a scatter plot. Now when we insert it, you can see it's certainly not uh, in a state that we really, really want it to be. So first of all, what we're going to do is right click on the, on the, on the axis area. So right click on this format axis, and we want the maximum to be 10. So same for our other axis, we want the maximum to be 10 there. And that's going to give us something to start with. Our chart title again, if we click on the title and click uh, equals, then we can actually uh, select the sheet name. And that's going to come up as the sheet name. And that will change if we change the sheet name in the future. Or you could use your product name if you really wanted to as well. So now we've got a little bit of a start. But for our data, we want to right click and select data. And we want to just make sure that there's only one uh, legend here f to start with. So we're going to delete one of them and just remove. But we'll leave us with one. Now if we edit uh, that series, our X series values, we want these to be uh, these values, so our satisfaction level. And our Y series values, if we just uh, get rid of all of those, let's get rid of that. And if uh, this is our place in the life cycle. In fact, it should be the other way around, I think, sorry. So the X values should probably be the place in the life cycle. And the Y values should be the satisfaction levels. Now we're, now we're starting to look a little bit better, but it's certainly not perfect yet. So with our chart design, we want to add a chart element. And we actually want to add some axis titles. We want to add the primary horizontal, and we also want to add the primary vertical. Now, if we click on this and do the same thing as we did for our normal title, axis title for our vertical, now we said that was our satisfaction level. So if we say equals our satisfaction level title, then that's going to change if we ever change that in the future. Same for our horizontal one. If we click equals, this is going to be the place in our life cycle. Now we're starting to look a little bit better. To increase the size of these dots, uh, what we need to do is just go to marker options, go to our built-in options. We've got a nice circle there, and we can make these uh, a little bit larger as we need to either up or down. That's up to us. Now we also want to right click and we're going to add data labels. So with these data labels at first it adds, uh, adds them as numbers, but we want to do something different. So if we right click and we're going to format data labels, what we actually want is a value from cells. And the cell range we want is, uh, are the names themselves. So we're going to select all of these names and click OK. But we don't want the numbers anymore, so we'll just get rid of those numbers. And now, as you can see, we have all of these items and they're named accordingly to, uh, to the names that we've put on our feature names. So now this really stands out nicely. And let's just make the, the background white and we could give them maybe a bit of an outline, maybe a light gray outline. Yeah, I think that would be quite nice actually. And so now we've got all of these looking really, really good on our Kano analysis chart but we still need the other lines. So we still need the actual, the, the horizontal and vertical lines, and we still need the, those bendy lines to show us where the satisfiers, delighters, and the must-haves are on our Kano analysis chart. So the first thing we're going to do is create uh, a new axis. So select the data, uh, and or the new legend. So we add this legend, 
uh, and this is going to be our, uh, our lines basically. And the X values, we're going to select uh, down here that, that five that we put in before. And the Y values, we're going to use the other five. Uh, so if we click OK, now we have a dot in the very, very center. And if we click OK again, we're going to select that dot and we're going to go to Chart Design. We're going to go to Add Element and Add Error Bars. So error bars to be based on a percentage. Let's say based on a percentage. And now we've got our error bars. We want to click on those error bars, right click and format those error bars. The percentage we want is 100%. And same for our other error bar, uh, the, the vertical one as well. Format that error bar. We want 100% there. Uh, and, but we can also change the, the color and everything and make sure that this fits the way that we want it. Or maybe we make it a, a gray. It's, it's really up to you. But we don't want any caps, so we just, uh, we just want a nice square end. Let's get rid of this orange part. We'll format this, this series as well. And we can actually just uh, have this as a marker and with no fill and with no border. And that way that will actually just disappear very, very nicely but we still need to put the curved lines in. And to do that, we're actually just going to go Insert. Uh, we're going to Illustrations and Shapes, and it's going to be a freeform shape. Now, when we create this freeform shape, we're going to click at every point where we want it to change the angle ever so slightly. And we won't get this perfect at, at, start, at the start, but we can modify this, and I'll show you how. So first of all, we'll start at six, and we'll take this all the way up to 10. If we click first, click a little bit more, and click a little bit more, and click all, click, click until we get all the way to 10, and then click uh, Escape. Now, that's, as you can see, it's not perfect. So we can, first of all, let's make the outline the color that we want and the size that we want, so a little bit, little bit weight here. Now we can right click and we can edit the points. So with these points, let's uh, start smoothing these out ever so slightly. Now this one can go up here, this one can go down here, this one can get smoothed out. This one can actually, we can delete that point, I think. This one we can delete as well. And now it's looking a lot better. If we click away, now we've got a, a much nicer, smoother line. And of course, you can keep modifying this. You can modify this to suit yourself as well. Now we still want to, to do the same thing, uh, but the other way, or we can select the current line and just flip it on its head. So turn it upside down and turn it the other way around as well. This is a, the easy, easy way to do it. But of course you can create one you know, from scratch as well. That's, that's definitely another, another way to do it. And lastly, all we need to do is uh, insert some text boxes, text and text box, and we'll select it over here. These are our delighters and copy that across. Now we can have this as our satisfiers. And lastly, these are our must-haves. Now we might wanna get rid of the outline as well. That looks like there's an outline there. And now we've got this amazing Kano analysis chart that, uh, that shows us exactly where it is on the timeline, on the place in their life cycle, and the customer satisfaction level. Uh, and it's a beautiful chart, and it's going to help you so much when you're actually prioritizing or creating new products or features in your own business or your own startup. I hope you've enjoyed yourself creating this sheet with me today because I really enjoyed myself spending the time with you. And I hope you take this sheet and create something amazing in your own business. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.